I'm president of the Adelaide Parklands Association and some of the other speakers may be talking about tactics, but I want to share some insights um, that we've gained in the last few years about strategy, because strategy comes before tactics. Everybody has something that they want to share, to protect, uh, and this is what we're concerned with, the Adelaide Parklands. And we came to the view a few years ago that the parklands would be protected only when a sufficient number of people demand that they are protected. We don't have a sufficient number yet. That's obvious from the attacks that are still continuing on the Adelaide Parkland. Some of you might remember this. This was our logo for a very long time. And a couple of years ago, somebody just came up with a suggestion at, the, um, at our AGM, why don't we get a better logo or a newer logo? And that rather innocuous suggestion got us going on rather a long journey. Started with the idea of a logo. I had a go at designing a new one, and I'm pretty crap at that. So um, people didn't like my suggestions, and that, in hindsight, they were very wise not to like my suggestions. So we obtained professional assistance on a rebranding strategy. And the first thing we got told by branding consultants was the logo comes last. Think deeper than just a logo. What do you want to be known for? What is your reputation? I think quite often were considered as people who just chatted away. We were all talk, no action. And this cartoon in the Sunday Mail or the advertiser really hit home to me. Valdis considered us, the cartoonists, considered us a freak show. And I thought long and hard about the fact that this was how we were perceived. On the fringes of society, people did not take us seriously. We were complaining, complaining, complaining. So we started a strategic plan because that comes before branding and logo. And one of the first things we were told by other people who know what they're talking about is that you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. We had to be more inclusive because we wanted to attract these people as our future members and future Parkland supporters. So instead of thinking about what we opposed, we started with this really fundamental question. What do we support? What is the thing that we love that we want to protect. And so we came up with this benchmark and we've been relying on this ever since. It's actually a very simple concept, three overlapping circles, open, green, public. Various land uses might be open, but they're not green and public. And other land uses might be public, but they're not open and green. Obviously not every part of the Adelaide Parklands is open, green and public, but this became our benchmark so that we weren't coming up with an ad hoc response to every proposed development parklands. We were always referring back to this. Is it open, green, public, or is it at least two out of those three? Once we developed the benchmark, we then tried to develop a strategic plan about what we do, also what we don't do, you know what, mission creep, and who we are. And we came up with these potential hooks for potential supporters. What would draw them in to becoming more involved in the Adelaide parklands? We wanted people to explore the parklands. If they were exploring, we thought they would be inspired. If they were inspired, we thought they'd want to protect and or restore. So those are the four hooks on which our strategic plan was based. Then we had to decide whether our name needed to be changed. What name would best fit our strategic plan? You know, we've got all of these different ideas, friends of, defenders, lovers, progress association. The one thing we didn't want to continue with was the word preservation because preserving is for fruit and veggies. It suggests no change ever, not even positive open green public change. So we ditched the word preservation and we merely called ourselves the Adelaide Parklands Association, which is a generic name that can fit in any future strategic plan. Only then were we ready for a branding consultant? And we consulted these four organisations, partnerships, firms within Adelaide, and we picked this one. That's Her name is Abra Renfrey, and she leads a branding consultancy called Detour Design. She did a lot of research. She got 319 people to answer questions. What's your age range, your gender, your postcode? How often do you visit any part of the parklands? How often do you use them? And then they developed a creative brief. Are you happy with this brief? I asked us, yes. These are the goals for a creative brief. They looked at the Adelaide Parklands, developed some colours that were sympathetic with the idea of parks, and they came up 
this is the concept that they came up with. That's the outline of Adelaide around the parklands. Turn that on its edge. And Abra said, that's too much of a gift to ignore. You just put another fold on the top and it becomes not just the Adelaide outline, but a heart. And so the branding message became that heart, which indicates love, love your parklands. And why do we love our parklands? Because they're so tiny. There's only 0.2% of the Adelaide metro area that's Adelaide parklands. There's another 326,000 hectares that isn't. And our four hooks that I mentioned earlier, explore, inspire, protect, restore, they got their own variations of the logo. So every time we talk about anything to do with the parklands, we're using that logo, that heart shape. That shows what we believe in. And it's always, always a positive message because whether we're talking about exploring, inspiring, protecting or restoring, there's always a heart in it. We explore with guided walks, online trail guides. Every couple of weeks, there's a guided walk in the parkland. So we're not just talking, we're doing. That's the important thing. Park ambassadors, one for each park, nearly. We also inspire. I mentioned that comes after explore, inspire. We, we run the Adelaide Parklands Art Prize, which is a huge effort, $50,000 prize money. We had an opening night. Uh, we run this every two years, so it's currently underway at the moment for the 2023 edition. That's our overall winner, Dan Withy, who took home $20,000 for his first prize painting, which is called the, the Parklands and the Hungry Developer. We run an Instagram feed every single day. There is at least one picture of the Parklands on our Instagram feed, but protecting is probably the main thing, Some, the thing that we still do as much as we ever have, drawing attention to threats, endorsing pro-park election candidates and aligning with like-minded groups. This is just one of the current threats that are around. There's many more. I could speak a long time about that, but I'm not going to. We also post on Facebook and Twitter pretty much every day, if not more than once a day. And bi-monthly email newsletter twice every month, which includes stories about exploring, inspiring, protecting and restoring. The rebranding has been spectacularly successful. We have more than doubled the number of people coming to our website. We've more than doubled our membership. So I consider that a success. That's a strategic success that comes from planning properly first about what you stand for and what you believe in. In city council supplementary elections, we're two from two. These are the candidates that we supported in supplementary elections, and they both got elected, which was quite a surprise, but that's good. And alliances with like-minded um, projects and groups that we're always pursuing, including with the National Trust. Not only that, we're restoring. We've got our own regreening project, which is partly underway. Keep pushing for council and state government restorations, and we do twice yearly park cleanup days. This little spot here, we've been given permission to put in a garden. Still working through the city council procedures to get what we want to do approved, but it's underway. And we ran a poster design competition for that. So it's involving the community as much as possible. And in terms of restore, we've been campaigning to restore Helen Mayo Park and Kate Cox Park, where the state government now wants to put a $3 billion hospital and eight-storey car park and park cleanup days, which I already mentioned. So... That's what we do, and I think I've pretty much explained why we do it. It's a strategy that I think could cross over into broad strategy to adapt to your own needs in your own area, but hopefully that will help.